Hi there, in this video I'm going to machine the uh, pistons for the Jerry Howell V-Twin. Now some might say that I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none and that they're probably uh, not far off to be honest. Now the, the drawing suggests that you make the pistons out of cast iron and I originally thought well I'll, I'll make them out of aluminium but then I, I, I started looking into e thermal expansion which I know nothing about really. Um, but I found that for cast iron, the thermal expansion is 5.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6. And for aluminium, the thermal expansion is 24 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. So, doing the sum, so assuming this piston is going to be around about an inch in diameter, and the temperature increase is going to be 200 degrees C, I don't know what it might be, but if it is, this is what it comes out at. So the formula is 25.4, so in, in terms of converting inches to uh, millimetres, multiplied by 5.8, multiplied by 200, i.e. 200 degrees C, and divide it by um, 10 to the power of 6. So you've got six zeros there. And that comes in at uh, 0 0.029. 464 millimetres converted to inches is just over a thou. So, cast iron piston, if it increases by 200 degrees C and it's an inch in diameter, it's going to increase by a thou. Bearing in mind that the cylinders are also cast iron, so the cylinders, I think, would increase by just over a thou as well. So, there's no problems there whatsoever. However, aluminium is a different story because the thermal expansion is 24 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. So for a 1 inch diameter piston increasing by 200 degrees C it's going to be 25.4 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 200 over um, uh, 1 and uh, 6 zeros which equals point one two one nine two millimeters which equates to just under five thou so this aluminium piston is going to increase by five thou in a cylinder that's only going to increase by one thou so that would mean that the the difference in size for this piston would have to be it would have to be at least four thou less than the internal diameter of the uh, cylinder which to me is a bit sloppy um, and I have no idea whether or not this engine will get up to 200 degrees C or, or beyond I have no idea uh, but having thought about it I think what I'm going to do is make the pistons out of cast iron the, the big drawback with this is the weight of the pistons so if you make them out of cast iron you've got to remove as much material as possible to get the weight down so the machining process is slightly more complicated aluminium dead straightforward I, I would say but anyway we'll go with cast iron and we'll see how we get on I've got this piece of uh, cast iron ignore these grooves they were uh, just an experiment they're going to be uh, machined off and uh, what I need to do first of all is to face this end I need to uh, reduce this down to uh, 0.999 of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to use the fine feed on the carriage um, just to make a cut and uh, see how far away we are from uh, 0 0.999 of an inch.
Okay, so that's measuring um, three thou over an inch. Uh, so I'm four thou out. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll move um, the uh, cross slide in by about one and a half thou. That'll get me close to an inch. And then I'll uh, use a bit of uh, wet and dry just to get it down to uh, 0.999 of an inch. Okay, so that's just a gnat's whisker over uh, an inch. Looks about two tenths of a thou over. Uh, so like I say, I'll use a bit of uh, wet and dry now, 400 grit. I've changed my mind actually. Um, I've decided to aim for uh, exactly an inch in diameter, which is what that is. These uh, cylinders are uh, one thou over an inch, and um, that feels like a nice fit. And if I pull like that, I get a pop. Uh, so I think I'm okay with that. Having looked at the drawing again, I mean the drawing suggests that the cylinder should be exactly um, an inch in diameter so this is a thou over and uh, the piston should be uh, 0.999 um, of an inch so a thou less than the uh, inside diameter so with those being a thou over an inch uh, those being an inch in diameter uh, is uh, the right way to go I think so my piston rings are 36 thou wide and 36 thou deep. So what I need to do is to cut a groove. The first groove is, um, let me see, 55 thou from this front face. This parting tool should be 36 and a half thou wide. I think it's closer to 37, but I think it'll be okay. And I, I need to cut to a depth of um, 40 thou It's in there okay. I'm happy with that. So what I need to do is to move the tool down again, create a gap of uh, 50 thou and do another cut, so exactly the same and then I move it down again uh, by another measurement, I haven't worked that out yet, and cut another groove. Um, but I'll, I'll do those two off camera. Well, they seem to have turned out okay so far. So uh, what I need to do now is to go to the mill and start milling some of this out. Now just out of curiosity, this is the weight of the piston before the material is removed. 
so that's 80 grams. Now I've calculated that the hole for the wrist pin needs to be um, 0.515 of an inch from the top end and it's important that this is drilled accurately because um, the hole for the wrist pin needs to sort of overlap where the um, oil ring is going to be because the oil ring acts as a retainer for the wrist pin so just to double check that I'm on zero there and if I move now the wrist pin is a quarter of an inch so if I move the table uh, 0.125 it should show me that I am actually on that groove which I am so I'm happy with that so uh, I'll go back to the original position I'll uh, centre drill drill through with um, a quarter of an inch drill bit well just less than that and then I'll ream it So that's the table centred. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this uh, MT3 blank in here. That measures about an inch in diameter. That's uh, 26 millimetres. Tie that up, tighten it up. So I know that's centred now. So what I need to do is to um, clamp it down and then once I've clamped it down I can put uh, the piston in, in there then I'll get back to you. Okay so I need to make sure that the good gym pin hole is parallel with the uh, bed of the mill so just put this piece of silver steel through put a gauge on and um, So that looks spot on. Okay, so using a half inch slot drill, I need to uh, drill to a depth of uh, 0.875, so that's only going to leave 75 thou at the other end. I think my slot drill's blunt. Try again. Well, that seemed to go okay. 
Uh, now the slight problem I've got here is this should be a diameter of half an inch but I've only got a 12 millimeter uh, slot drill so I'll have to do a little bit of uh, widening out later on um, and the actual um, sort of width of this you know, like an oval is going to be 0.8 of an inch so that means 0.4 of an inch from uh, from the center now bear in mind 12 millimeters is 0.4724 half of that is 0.2362 that leaves 0.164 um, to come off here so I've offset the y-axis by uh, 0.164 and I'm going to drill again to the same depth of uh, whatever it was So what I need to do is to uh, move the y-axis the other way, um, again um, off centre by um, 0.167 or 0.164 of an inch to drill the other side. But I'll do that off camera. Well the good news is I uh, found a, a three flute um, half inch end mill. So I've managed to uh, clean it out exactly uh, the right dimensions. So what I need to do now with this tool is I need to go right to the bottom where I machined it out which is 0.875 of an inch. Having got to the bottom I'm going to move the x-axis by 10 thou at a time and then I'm going to turn the table round anti-clockwise. Now I'm going to move the x-axis again out by another tenth hour until and keep on repeating the same process until I get to uh, uh, 150 thou so that will create um, a recess at the far end to get the weight down Um, now the depth of this recess needs to be 0.23 of an inch but my cutter depth is 0.125 so I need to move the spindle up by 0.105 and um, repeat exactly the same process as before sort of cutting it out tenth out of time but I'll do that off camera and now I'm going to do a similar process on this end here and uh, I'll be moving the cutter out gradually to um, 0.2 of an inch so that should leave about 10 thou on the edge uh, so I'll go out in 10 thou increments Well, having got my brain into gear I realise now that it's a lot easier to uh, cut this using a standard 4 flute end mill. So uh, I've uh, moved it down 
by um, 0.25 of an inch this is a half inch four flow end mill so I need to uh, gradually move the uh, x-axis out making 10,000 cuts until I get to uh, 0 0.20 of an inch So I've uh, just bolted this collet chuck to uh, a piece of angle plate and I've made sure that the wrist pin holes in the piston are vertical. I found the centre using this wiggler. Now the idea is to cut an arc out um, which should be an inch in diameter arc but uh, I've not got an inch in diameter uh, cutter. This is a um, 25 millimeter one, which is pretty close. So I touched the edge, and I've moved it in um, 0 0.23 of an inch. And I'm going to uh, try this plunge cut here. See whether I can see if this works. Hopefully it will. I think I might try nibbling away at it. I'm going to use this little micro chuck to uh, drill some oil holes. And I've just marked the oil holes up uh, just roughly with some felt tip pen from the drawing. Um, I don't think they need to be that accurate in terms of their location, but they need to be on the, o the groove for the oil ring. So it's just a matter of turning this round in the collet chuck and drilling them. I'll do those, do the rest off camera. Well, they didn't turn out too bad in the end. I just m messed up on a couple of uh, bits. First of all, when I machined the first piston, 
um, I'd have been better off cutting the recess out at the top because then I wouldn't have had to uh, grind as much material away from this woodruff cutter because I'd, I'd allowed clearance at that point obviously if I'd have machined all that out I would have probably only had to ground out half that length um, but that, that's a minor point the sort of more significant issue is the fact that when I was cutting the recess down in here at the bottom um, I, I was moving the table, the x-axis um, I should have moved it um, 0.125 of an inch as per what I'd written in my instructions but for some reason I uh, got it closer to 0.15 of an inch so that actually means that the um, <laughs> the amount of material between the inside there and the bottom of the uh, ring grooves is uh, probably about 15 thou uh, less, 20 thou less maybe um, however the good news is my ring grooves aren't as deep as the ones in the drawings. The ones in the drawings are 50 thou and mine are 40 thou. So I, I think I can get away with it. M my calculations are there's probably about 50 thou, 55 thou between the bottom of those rings, ring grooves, and the inside of the uh, pistons. So I think I'll be okay. And uh, just out of curiosity, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, see what the way. Hopefully they'll weigh close to uh, each other. Um, 32 grams. Thirty-four grams. Try again. These are wholly accurate scales. Thirty-four. Mm, Thirty now. Thirty-two up there. 32 there so they're pretty close and if I compare those to an aluminium piston ring this is uh, one of the spare ones I made when I was making the uh, odds and ends engine 22 so there is quite still quite a significant difference in, in weight and um, there are obviously 50% uh, more in weight than aluminium ones uh, but they are as per the drawing in fact the less than uh, what the drawing is because I took so much material out but hey ho well I think these must be the most complicated pistons I've ever had a go at making uh, I think they turned out okay in the end um, I think what I need to do at some point is to create a bit of a jig to um, test the compression out It'd be uh, nice to be able to fit the rings and uh, put them in the cylinders, create a jig at the top and put some compressed air in to see how well the sealing. Um, that's probably uh, something I'll do over the next few weeks. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later.